Hey, Alana, Hudson Mason here. Is a new roof still on your to-do list, but you've been delayed due to rising home service costs? Well, here's a fantastic solution from Accent Roofing Service. Zero down, zero payments, and zero interest for a full year. That's right. You can get your new roof now and start paying next year. Act quickly because Accent's incredible offer of zero, zero, zero with a 12-month deferred payment option for a lifetime roof system isn't going to last long. Contact the craftsman at Accent Roofing Service today. AccentRoofingService.com. This is an Extra 106.3 podcast. To hear more live and local content like this, tune into 106.3 FM or download the Extra 106.3 app. Extra 106.3 and a second chance bail bonds are here to back your blue. Back Your Blue highlights special initiatives, criminal justice programs, and community events aimed at keeping our communities safer. Join a Second Chance Bail Bond CEO, Daniel Matalon, and host Tug Coward to learn some good news about and from the law enforcement and justice communities. Now it's time to Back Your Blue on Extra 106.3 FM and the Extra 106.3 app. Welcome to Back Your Blue. My name is Tug Coward. Along with Daniel Madelon, he is the CEO of A Second Chance Bell Bonds. And your goal in this show is to back your blue. That's, that's the reason the name of the title. And we have so many great folks that come in today and every show for that matter uh, to talk about all the things that are going on in law enforcement and that community and, and folks that you know well and work with all the time. Yeah, absolutely. S- supporting law enforcement. Yeah. And uh, this morning from Gwinnett County. Sheriff Kibo Taylor and Lieutenant Gennaro Hare is with us. And, man, what a, an incredible background that y'all have in service. Man, I, I've never served the way y'all have, and I, and I do nothing but uh, give the big hand salute. I was, I was in the Navy. I served in the United States Navy. And when I got out of the Navy for a little while, I thought I wanted to be in law enforcement. And, not uh, too it, late. Yeah, well, let me tell you, I don't know. I, I'm not good at running. <laughs> There's got to be some sort of physical fitness test that I'm going to have to pass. I have a feeling that I like donuts too much. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that I like cake too much. Or like, I like pizza and wings too much and some cold beers too much because my, my, uh, my physical fitness. like you fit right in, yeah. man. <laughs> okay, well, then maybe so. Who knows? Maybe, maybe there is something I can do over Gwinnett County. But, uh, but thank you all for what you do because the service that you all have to the community is unbelievably underappreciated. And, and the one thing I want you to leave with after we're done with the show is, man, those guys care about what we're doing and care about us as people. Thank you. Yeah, Thank man. Thank you so much. So Thank you. what was it that got you, uh, Sheriff, to go, you know what? I think I'm going to go serve the community. I think I want to be sheriff one day. I don't even know if I can say this on the radio, but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. But... What got me actually got me into law enforcement, it wasn't where I grew up saying, hey, you know, one day this is what I want to do. You know, I mean, of course, when you're a small kid, you know, uh, I think they bought me a police uniform one time. I got the picture of that. And like I for Halloween to, or something? I don't know what it was, yeah. man. I was so small, man. I right. was. It might have been for Christmas. Who okay. knows? We didn't have money for Halloween. Yeah, we didn't, man. You know, we didn't have that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, what actually got me into law enforcement was, man, I had, I had a rough patch. Uh, going to UGA, had flunked out, and I needed a job. So. Been there. <laughs> I dropped out of the same college three times. I think it's some sort of record. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't getting Dalton State College where I'm from. I think they have me on the wall. Oh. Like, it's like the, the 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 guy that dropped out the most is Tug Howard. Yeah, well, let me tell you <laughs> That's what. my claim to fame, y'all. Yeah, my last, we was on the quarter. We, this was before semesters here. So we were on the quarter system, man. I had, my grades were so bad. I told them, don't even bother putting a stamp on sending me the letter about not coming back. I got it. <laughs> Just save you thirty three cents. Save it. Well, I don't think it was that much. Yeah, that right, was probably about not. a nickel yeah. or a dime. But right. uh, you know, that's what really got me into law enforcement. And uh, you know, once you get in and you get started, it's like it's just an extension of life. You know, when you are truly in the profession that you're supposed to be in, you know, you'll have that level of compassion. You know, you'll have that level of, you know, trying to make change for yourself, the community, you know, at whatever level, you know, whether how big your table is or how small your table is, you know, you'll know very quickly if you're in the right field or not. And uh, I've been blessed that 
you know, if I had ran it all the way through and not took my little break when I retired, it would have been 40, 41 years this year. Goodness gracious. And it all started back in 83. Mm-hmm. 1983. So what was going on in 1983 in your life? You know, it, 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 take us back there. Where where was where, where you and, and how did you say, you know, this is um, – I, I'm, I'm going to make the leap. You know, this is this is something that I really genuinely care about because, I mean, becoming an officer has unbelievable pressure that most people have never experienced. You don't get it in any maybe a, a, a I don't know, Air Force pilot has that kind of pressure or a Navy pilot landing a, a moving object on top of another moving object. That's a lot of pressure. But when it comes to the moment that that you know that you're inter- interacting with the public you, you have no idea what the person's day has been like you don't know what their background is it, that take me back to that moment well you mentioned an aircraft carrier obviously Gwinnett County was like that aircraft carrier you know it was turning okay and if you ever watch an aircraft turn it don't just turn on a mm-hmm. dime it no, was sir. turning it was changing and I guess for myself the unknown was better than the known in other words, I had no idea what law enforcement was about because I had never worked in it previously. You know, spent more of my time, you know, running from law enforcement. You know, so, you know, you get into it and, you know, you learn, you get your training. You're trained for that moment. You're trained for that time. But you also know, too, that there's so much more. And that's what gives you your chance and your opportunity to put your footprint on what's going on. Um I've had the opportunity of watching Gwinnett County explode, not grow, explode. Because at one time, I think we were the fastest growing county in the nation for a number of years. And you just saw it. You saw the diversity coming in. You saw the diversity in businesses coming in, new ideas. Um, You know, Gwinnett County just became that hodgepodge of cultural in, in integrity and in integration there. So I was thankful to be a part of it. Um, had a very good career at the police department, um, which gave me the opportunity to grow and learn, you know, to be sheriff. You have a pretty extensive background, 30 years public service. Um, you get uncover inve- undercover investigations, special investigations, the Gwinnett County uh, drug task force and FBI drug task force. I mean, those are those are pretty extensive, man. That's like something you read in a book, you know. That's like a something that seems like a Navy SEAL would be doing. You know what I mean? It, it really does. I mean, that, for for a guy like me, just a regular dude, I see that as holy cow. This dude's done the real stuff. I mean, so is there any of them that you? It, Enjoyed. I don't know if "enjoyed" is the right word, but uh, any of them that were more challenging and that that you embraced that that was your favorite moments. Man, it would be too many to talk about. Um, again, finding your niche. You know, I had. You know, if we had time, and I know we don't have time now, Daniel and we I'll got all kinds of time. Man. We'll make some time. No, Whatever we'll you talk got. about, uh, some of my, you know, how I actually got steered into working in the undercover and um, narcotics at the time, vice is what we called it back in the day. I was not a good road cop. Okay, I, I just be honest with you. Why and, not? Uh, What's that? What, but but why? You know what? <clears throat> I think, and I hate to say it this way, but I went in with a preconceived notion of what I wanted to do and what I wanted my career to look like. You know, Miami Vice was out. You know, it was just, you know, and it's just, when you see TV, the cool guys was the ones that, you know, walked around in the suits and, you know, doing other things other than, you know, policing the streets. You know, I was a young guy, I was 23, you know, still wasn't focused in the way that I needed to be. And uh, I had failed uh, a couple of tests. And so they called me in and they told me, hey, look, man, you know, you fell another test, you're out of the academy. Oh, no. And I still had the hardest subjects coming up, like uh, traffic investigations, which I just said I was no good at that, you know, and a couple of other things like driving and shooting, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All of the, you know, just the perfect storm of not being able to have a good law enforcement career. And you're thinking, oh, Lord. Oh, I did, man. I was like, okay, well, maybe this isn't what, you know, what I need to be doing. So, and uh, it's always easy to step away from challenges, but... I did. I buckled down. You know, I was a single guy. I didn't really have, you know, family. I didn't have responsibilities. So, you know, I was just playing. And um, 
I decided that maybe I need to take this a little bit more serious, and I'm so glad that I did. Uh, never, ever would compare myself to much of nothing, especially the guys that serve our country doing whatever they're doing. I was having fun, okay, whether it was a, you know as an investigator. Now, when I was a sergeant, it wasn't so fun because now you're supervising people doing a dangerous job, and you're relying upon them. And uh, so with that, you know, I mean, I just had a good time, and I was blessed to be able to do it. But I had lo- uh, locked a guy up, thought I had him on DUI, thought I had a whole bunch of hodgepodge of charges on him, and I'm like, I'm good. Had gotten some information on the guy a couple of nights before, so I knew that there was an outstanding warrant. Well, what I didn't know was the guy had already went in and bonded out. Oh, okay. This is where Daniel comes in, right? Yeah, you know, I, uh, Daniel might have been the one that bonded him out, man. This was back in 1982. What were you doing in 82, Daniel? I, I was, I was, you was messing I was things born, up. That's what you were doing. I was born in 1982. Oh, man. It, it was, was somebody like Daniel story. that was messing things up. Somebody true like story. Daniel that was foretold that Daniel was going right. to come in. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But uh, just, you know, it was a bad situation. And... You know, I, I got through that situation, and I had a lieutenant that was very good. He set me down. He said, look, man, you got to find your niche. Shortly thereafter, I had the opportunity to go and do some other things, and, you know, my career took me to narcotics, and it's been it's been a whirlwind ever since. Man, it's very intimidating to me, so I can only imagine what it is to everybody else. How do you deal with that? Like, what, what is it that you do that that kind of settles your nerves? Well, I mean, helping people, I guess, probably is what okay. settles. You know, I mean, that for me, I would have thought know. Jack Daniels. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. That would have been my guess. But <laughs> but, but helping is good. Well, That's I mean, a good place to start. Hey, hold on, the Jack Daniels is what got me kicked up out of Georgia. Okay, <laughs> oh, you, I wasn't supposed to say that. We're going to cut that part look, out. <laughs> you and a long list of other people. You ain't the only one been kicked out of Georgia for that. Yeah, good. Days, it messed up a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it'll get you sideways. It will get you sideways. I've been there before in the Navy. I come up on the ship, and the ship wasn't moving, yet the ship was moving. You know what I mean. <laughs> we will continue the conversation here on Extra 106.3 because I want to get into your background as far as education, and then we get to uh, Lieutenant Hare and uh, his service to Gwinnett County Sheriff's Department, too. Also, your education, why it is that you got into serving the public the way that you have and putting yourself in harm's way. It is uh, just so important. And I know you guys have some really, really great things that you were doing and uh, and events you're involved in, some of the things that Daniel's helping out with, too. We'll talk about those next on Back Your Blue here on Extra 106.3. Hey, Atlanta, Hudson Mason here. Is a new roof still on your to-do list, but you've been delayed due to rising home service costs? Well, here's a fantastic solution from Accent Roofing Service. Zero down, zero payments, and zero interest for a full year. That's right. You can get your new roof now and start paying next year. Act quickly because Accent's incredible offer of zero, zero, zero with a 12-month deferred payment option for a lifetime roof system isn't going to last long. Contact the craftsman at Accent Roofing Service today, accentroofingservice.com. Is this the year you want to grow your business? Do you want to expand your team, build a new office? Hey, it's Tug, and I want to tell you about First Liberty Building and Loan. Aren't you exhausted by going to lenders, building a relationship, and a week later, you're dealing with a new person? You won't have to with First Liberty Building and Loan. The Frost family has been helping businesses grow since the 90s, and they can help you too. They know the patterns, they know the ebbs and flows, and they know business. Now the Frost family wants to know you. FirstLibertyGA.com. Buying a building, building a building, buying a franchise, or expanding. Reach out and spend 10 minutes with them. See if you're a fit for them and if they're a fit for you. FirstLibertyGA.com. By the way, if you're a young banker and you want to work with a team that's faith-friendly with a culture of excellence, First Liberty might be a good match. Reach out to First Liberty Building and Loan at FirstLibertyGA.com. That's FirstLibertyGA.com. This is Back Your Blue, presented by a Second Chance Bail Bonds, live on Extra 106.3 FM and streaming for free anytime on the Extra 106.3 app. Welcome back to Back Your Blue with uh, Gwinnett County Sheriff 
Hebo Taylor and Lieutenant Gennaro Hare. Um, well, let's get into your background as far as um, your, your education. A lot of people, you said you didn't finish well at UGA, which you and, I mean, there's so many people to write down that name that, uh, that have not done well at UGA. You get over there and get your first little taste of freedom. And my son is a freshman down at College of Charleston, and um, I have a feeling. I know something just tells me he's trying to experience some of that freedom, too. And I'm hoping that, uh, that he's able to handle it certainly better than I did and, and maybe better than you. Although you bounced back, though, because you did get your education done down at Columbus State. Yeah, I mean, you know, we joke about it and we laugh about it, but there's a serious um, on the line to it. And it is failure is never final, okay? And I want, and that's what I tell young people, man, you know, no matter what you've done, how you, you know, came out, how the process, you know, either treated you good, treated you bad, whatever, get back up, dust yourself off and just keep going. Um, I was... And I, and, I, and I tell a story, and this ain't a joke, okay? So I don't know if I but, believe it, but okay, yeah, go ahead and tell know, it. But, you know, I was pretty well much forced into going back to school. I had gotten an associate's degree before I went to Georgia, so I feel like, you know, seeing what I saw in the police department at that time and the lack of education, you know, um, I thought I was on pretty good footing. And so, but like I said, you know, as anything else changed, um, it changed. The requirements changed. Thought process changed. People, we wanted to start becoming more professional. And at that particular point in time, um, I had gone as far as I could test. The next step was an appointment to the rank of major. And, you know, they came in, they told me, hey, you don't have a degree, you will not be appointed to, ma- to the rank of major. So I had to buckle down, you know, at the wrong time. And, Again? And, and yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you kids, man, hey, while your parents paying for it, go ahead and get it all in. Even though my parents weren't paying for it, go ahead and get it all in before you wind up and find yourself in a situation where you got to go back to school. Had two kids in school at that time trying to work. And, um, you know, so, I mean, I just had to buckle down, go back in, get my undergrad and my grad degree and um, – always had the 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 thirst for training you know i love training uh was been very blessed man that i was able to attend federal training and you know down at uh flea tech and uh some other places what so, is flea tech i'm not familiar what is that the uh federal uh law enforcement okay. training center down okay. in Brunswick, georgia okay and so able to do that and then you got certified as a general post instructor uh a certificate in, in intermediate advanced supervision and management and then uh you were trained in the drug unit command and certified crisis intervention trainer you're talking about things that sound again something sounds like it's on tv man this is like something you'd watch at eight o'clock you know that the, the law and order type shows this when they're calling you in you know but this is, is it this, too late for me to get on law and order no i don't think so <laughs> hey atlanta atlanta's the new hollywood they've hey. been calling you tomorrow <laughs> i ain't kidding look there's so many studios around here they'll have especially no, but seriously man they're getting people there are they're hiring people to make sure that these shows are genuine or at least have a a possibility of happening you know back in the day man the, the, the shows are just crazy let's make sure that we get cynthia to look at that for me yeah. see if i can get cynthia, you figure that out for us. <laughs> no okay 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 all right we need somebody we need yeah, somebody on this you know, real hey, real quick man you trying to run me up out of the business no, sir. already you know? hey you be, said you're looking forward be, to the future yeah well, <laughs> it may be hollywood you may be the next actor you know you, you may be the best big thing out of atlanta atlanta's well, a hotbed for music and entertainment man atlanta's a hotbed for everything well i'm not done being sheriff yet I know, so maybe I know. When, I'm, when i grow look up ahead. Yeah, look, look at ahead look at ahead just look at ahead you got every, you got to have a plan right that's why oh, you I, I you'd tell every kid you got to have a plan. You do, you do. Yeah, that, that you do. So yeah. Now I got to get back serious. What no, was the yeah. question again? <laughs> well, we're, we're just talking about those those things that you've done, like a certified crisis intervention trainer. You know, just the intensity of doing that. It seems like something you'd see on TV. Well, you know, like <clears throat> some of the stuff that I learned, uh, like uh, crisis intervention. You know, equity, diversity. Uh, dealing with and working with people with mental disabilities, developmental disabilities, you know, those type of things. I learned that after I had retired, you know, so it gave me, you know, when I retired, I took the chance and 
and it was a chance, you know, going back out doing stuff into the private sector and um, took another job back in at a behavior health center place. And um, I think, you know, that was just God's way of preparing me for the next Amen. step. You know, so I was learning things I didn't know I was learning. I was changing, changing my train of thought, didn't know what I was doing. But, you know, I had often looked at folks that was in the business for 30 and 40 years and, you know, progressive type chiefs. And I don't mean progressive as far as right or left. I yeah, mean people political. that was progressive yeah, enough sure. to change with the times and understand how to deal with, you know, younger people and, and understanding their, their, their areas of responsibility. So I think what was happening for me was it was a tutorial for me, and I didn't know it. And when I became sheriff, or excuse me, when I made the decision to run for sheriff, I did what I call a listening tour. So as I'm listening to people tell me, hey, I've been up out of this business for a long time. Tell me what your concerns are. And it just, for me, it just it felt like it just felt right in line. I'm like, man, I've been preparing for this. Yeah, good Lord you works know, in mysterious yeah, oh, ways. Absolutely. You know, and I'm like, I'm just I've been preparing for this. I've been working for this. And, you know, everything just fell in place. And even with and let me say it this way, even with what I had, what I was what pre perceived negative things happening and we had them. OK, but each and every time that something negative happened, a good plan and a good idea came up out of it. You know, one thing that you didn't ask me, you know, and I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit here, you know, because this is something that's resonating on my mind right now. You know, it's like one of the things we do is a book bag drive, okay? Oh yeah, okay. Now, I did not have that idea coming in, okay? But I had a very negative encounter with somebody in the bonding business. And I use that as an example. So the news media picked up on it when they tried to do some very ugly things to me behind it. And I'm like, maybe that's not a bad idea. Do a book bag drive. Okay. I wish I could sit here and say, you know, I had that idea coming in. But the negative perception of what I was doing and, and trying to do in the industry gave birth to that idea. And that is one of the best things we do every year. We do a book bag drive with the help of Daniel and other people like Daniel, you know, pitching in, you know, contributing, being a part of it. And let me just go ahead and say I love what you do in the community. I don't tell you that enough, but I do, you know. And I feel the same about you. Oh, it's and just like yeah. he and I, man, you know, we, we got that telekinetic uh, way like of thought, man. Like that movie Step Brothers? <laughs> no, I don't know about no Step Brothers, man. <laughs> Just kidding. Not unless I can be the younger one. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. uh, Definitely. You know, but um, no, but that's, you know, again, you know, we took a very bad situation and you see what came up out of it. So, again, you know, when you are willing to think outside of the box and you're willing to think past law enforcement you know we can do law enforcement in our sleep yeah big, okay it's just a bigger, the bigger picture, picture. Yeah. you know what else can we do for the community so that you know we can reduce the need for law enforcement sure yeah no it's it's incredible i want to move over to lieutenant Hare, and uh, you've been serving gwinnett county and the sheriff's department in the community outreach select command or uh, section commander uh also serving in law enforcement for 18 years in criminal investigation division division and the office of professional standards bachelor's in management supervision advanced and intermediate fto certifications um uh fto what is that field training okay okay um you've gotten the gwinnett county public unit citation award the sheriff's office unit citation award and gwinnett county chamber valor award in public safety Uh, and so the work that you've done is obviously been recognized by the community and first of all i want to say thank you for everything you do for our community man because i understand the pressure that you're on i watch the news at night just like everybody else i understand the pressure so thank you for that but but congratulations too man making a tough situation look real real easy well you know it's it's one of those things where it comes from the heart so you know when we get into law enforcement right in an academy just like sheriff mentioned 
you know, it's a lot of training. Okay, they're teaching you how to how to fight. They're teaching you how to shoot. They're teaching you how to drive. They're teaching you all these skills that will help you stay alive once you get out there on the street. But the one thing they don't teach you is about identifying other needs in the community. You know, identifying those areas of the community that are in need of food, those areas that are in need of services. Uh, that's the one thing that lacks in as far as law enforcement training. It's, it's not until you get out on the street and you start actually interacting with people. You see it up people. close. You see it up close. You, you realize it's not just about the running and gunning and arresting people. You understand that, and coming from where I came from as well, which is Flint, Michigan, uh, you understand that some of, some of these uh, situations that you're involved in are a direct result of lack of services or, or you know, lack of ability for people to find jobs or find food or shelter for their family. So they're doing whatever they can to survive. So that's where Sheriff Taylor came in, and he wanted to do something more in the community, uh, more so than just getting out there and serving warrants and, uh, you know, arresting people. Let's let's identify what the community needs. Let's identify how we can support and help. Well, Lieutenant, I would imagine that, you know, in, in the beginning, you know, as you're going through the training, it is about – enforcing the law and doing you know whatever the law says and all that the running and gunning part mm-hmm. as you talked about but i would imagine that when you do get into the community and being able to give back and see smiles on faces and taking need and replacing it with a, a service a, a backpack the way that sheriff talked about or, or whatever because i know you guys got a lot and we'll go through some of those seeing that need being met that has to be more rewarding we talked about the good book man it always says it's better to to give than it is to receive and that seems to be what y'all are doing. Exactly. That's exactly what we're doing. Uh, we understand that, you know, again, we have the ability to uh, provide services and resources. So why not connect people with those services and resources? You know, we, we have all kind of business partners that we deal with on a daily basis. Again, Daniel is one of our major, major uh, community partners. And we sit down all the time and just talk about things that we can do to help out the community. Hey, but, but Tug, their backpack you drive is 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 like it's next level. I mean, okay, it's, well you gotta. It's, you, you, you what's had, that mean? Uh, I'm, I'm just telling you, it's it's five star and it's next level. That's okay. all I can tell you. Okay, but well, I don't and you need to come out and see it <laughs> I would because love because it's it's honestly it's the biggest in the state by far and probably biggest in the southeast. I I have let me put it like this: I haven't seen a bigger backpack drive ever and i look at community stuff all the time so but what makes it, it just the, their, their team it, i mean what they've put together this is this is on the gwinnett county sheriff's office okay I mean, well, hey. well let me let me yeah sure walk me there. through it okay two things okay let me give you know like the old folks you say give folks their flowers before they die yeah you know i got the right people in community outreach okay hair does a fantastic job but when we came in we recognized just you know how important that unit was you know, and we didn't just want to come in and say, hey, you know, we want to do it just to say we did it. We did it with teeth, okay? We did it with a purpose. And to me, that is one of the most important units that I have is the community outreach. What makes it big is folks like Daniel. You know, you got to buy, you know, we, we call it snake oil. You know, you got to be willing to buy into the snake oil that we're selling. So I had to have people like Daniel and others to buy into what we're doing. Hey, this is what we're doing. Don't care how we got here. Okay, this is what we're doing. The point is that we got here. We're here, and we have a good thing. We have a good uh, idea. You know, we just need the resources to make it happen because you can't do it by yourself. Of course. So by having folks like Daniel and others that is willing to just, I'm, I'm not talking about, Putting the money, I see him out doing. Yeah, actually, you know, he's your out. Time is more yeah, valuable you know, than the money. As the owner and the CEO of his business, he's out passing out turkeys himself. That's why we're able to do what we do. Other people, I want to get involved. You know, Purdue coming in. You know, hey, we want to. You know, we got a truckload of, you know, food that we want to. Let's come find in. folks that you need know, it. Yeah, Walmart. 
Hendrix Chevrolet, and I mean, and I'm gonna get in trouble by naming out just a few and then well, missing others. So, well, there's so but, many, I'm sure. Yeah, so, but I bet you if know, you go to the website, you can find all of them. You can find every one of them, but that's the reason why. You know, and every year they come back, they want to do more. If they did X the year before, they come back, we're going to do X plus this year. And you're right, man, we don't look at, we don't judge. You know, I got people like, you know, well, they're pulling up in nice cars to get a turkey. Okay, then they pull up in a nice car and they get a turkey. I bet they got a big old car payment, too. Yeah, well, they probably yeah. do. You know, but, but, no, but yeah, my, my you, point you're is, right. You're right. they're spending money somewhere. There's a reason there's a need there. You Maybe know, you made and, a poor decision You're there. absolutely right. You know, um, and I'm not going to call this person's name, but, you know, I know a local businessman. Okay, our kids went to high school together. And uh, he had opened up a chain of uh, restaurants. And was doing good. And then I find out that behind COVID and some of this other stuff, he lost. He hit a lot of folks. He lost. And he showed up at, him and his family showed up at a food bank to get food to feed their family. So, you know. To the point. You can't, yeah, you can't be judgmental in because you don't really know. And if somebody wants to come in and cheat the system, then they cheat the system. Okay. Okay. You're exactly right. My mama used to tell me, she was like, if if they can live with it, I can live without it. Mm-hmm. That was her overweight. Oh, I'm going to steal that one. It's the truth. Yeah, I'm going to take that one. I'm going to keep. Did you, did you copyright that? No, no <laughs> sir. I'm going to get out and do it real quick, though. Yeah, you might if everybody copy, start using it. You might want to copyright that one there yeah. because when you hear the sheriff up there talking about that, then no, you, I hope you're going to know exactly hey, where it came hey, from. Hey, that'll be an honor for my mama. But Thank she you. used to tell me that all the time. She was like, if somebody takes something, you know, it, let's say they borrow ten dollars from you and never pay you back, she's like, if they can live with it, I can live without it. And I, that's been the way I've thought my entire life. And it doesn't matter what the situation is. And I've I passed that down to my own son. Mm-hmm. It's like it doesn't matter, man. That's between them and the good Lord. That, mm-hmm. that, that's that's something completely different. You do the right thing no matter what it there is. There you go. And and when you do that, you, your stress level goes down. The 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 importance of are they cheating? The system goes down because again, it doesn't matter. We're less. Here's another one she told me. She was like, "If if five people ask me for a dollar, and four of them waste it and don't use it, and they buy bubble gum with it or whatever, but the one person I give a dollar to, it helps. I've done the right thing. You go. And I always thought that that was the most wisdom, and I've kept those little, um, I don't know what you call them, those little anecdotes, I guess, my whole life, and that's the way that I try to look at life is through those lenses, man. Mm-hmm. And they ain't got nothing to do with me. They'll, they've got to, they've got to deal with that on the other side. And Daniel, and, that, and I would assume, cause these men are the same way and you can tell because their heart is doing the right thing. And it must be really easy for you as a business owner to be like, these are the folks I want to work oh, with. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. If my phone rings and it's Gwinnett County Sheriff's office, it's community outreach. It's a, it's a, it's immediate. It's a no brainer. Um, they, even the Turkey drive is, is something you should check out too. Boy, because it's goodness. like, I mean, it, it, you just, I've you, never seen him get go, giddy before. This is get, the first. You have to, if you're participating in it, you have to get there an hour early because if you don't, I sat in traffic. You won't find a place. <laughs> no, no, no. I couldn't even get into the fairgrounds because the because the traffic was so far backed up, and I'm sitting there in my car. I'm like, I'm going to miss the event that I'm helping in because there's so many people lined up to go to the event. You had to park in the grocery store. It's unreal. Store. It's it's like out of a movie. You had to park in the grocery store, get an Uber in. Literally have just to Uber in, or get some a police escort. Be like, fellas, I can't get in. It's blocked. I mean, it's oh, like. It's traffic everywhere. I so love it. So they do. They do a phenomenal. I got job. caught up in the traffic one time trying to get there myself. So <laughs> you're like, I'm a sheriff. Can y'all let me through? Hey, I'm the head know, of the organization. It's, it's, Somebody let me through. It's so funny, man. Funny. I had another event before the the. It was the turkey drive, right? Yeah. It was yep. the turkey drive, right? Yeah, okay. And I had another event, and I'm sitting there like, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. <laughs> And I mean, and I'm like, I'm not gonna say we broke any traffic laws to get. To no, this. I would never expect no, sir. But, but I, I never like, pin that on you. I was like, somebody's got to create a pathway, or Seriously. I won't be in the event myself. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I hear the fire department got the little thing where they can switch the lights when they need to get through. Somebody call the fire department. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Let's go through some of the other stuff, uh, Lieutenant Ware. What What are some of the other? Because you got them laid out in in front of you. What are some of the other things y'all are doing? So we we do tons of different things throughout the year, uh, but. The main things that we do are uh, our back to school bash. Uh, we have what is called the Sheriff's Cup, and then we have our Thanksgiving food giveaway. Okay. So we'll just kind of go down the list. Uh, March 17th, 
That's a Sunday, and I believe that's St. Patrick's Day, actually. Uh, we partnered up with Plaza Las America down in Lilburn, Georgia. We're doing like a little pop-up festival for businesses to come out and you know show their businesses and whatnot. We'll also have some uh, mental health providers and uh, social service providers out there to provide information for sure. you know whatever needs you may have. Uh, and then we'll have some local car show uh, car clubs come out and nice. show off some cool cars. Heck yeah, man! Just something to you know to start the summer with, start the spring and summer with, yeah. and kick off the year for 2024. All while giving back to the community, All which while is the, giving back. which is the focus. Exactly, exactly. And then so July 27th, which is a Saturday, uh, Gwinnett County Fairgrounds. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Get there on the 26th. Yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> a day early. Call the yeah. fire department, get that little button. Yeah. yeah. Get so, your spot on the 26th. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. That's our, this is the fourth annual back to school bash. So, again, we give out free, everything is free. Uh, the, the community does not have to pay for anything. We'll have those same individuals out there providing information for social services, Gwinnett County services, and then free food, free backpacks. Kids' free, haircuts. Free free haircuts, I mean, free it's, face it's, yeah. painting, uh, free everything. Uh, we got the Atlanta Falcons. They'll be out there. Goodness, all right. Yeah, I'm working on the Braves right now. Yes, sir. Hey, we we're something out there. I, I feel like we got some sort of connection somehow, somewhere, maybe somehow. Maybe you know, something. that's why I'm throwing that out there. You know, maybe somebody's listening. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a great event. Uh, we usually have anywhere between three and four thousand people show up to that every wow. single year. Yeah, and if you get the Falcons and the Braves, it seems like the, you know just just having that. It doesn't even have to be the biggest stars, man. It can be the mascots. These yep. days, the mascots for the Braves, the Falcons, the Hawks are all off the charts. So cool, man. Blooper is a hit anytime he comes through, man. He, not just kids. Like, kids light up. But something about Blooper, man, he makes everybody. Freddie the Falcon walks through, and kid, and grown yeah. men turn into kids. Like, oh, get yep. my picture yep. with Freddie. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. And, or Harry the Hawk comes through. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah, he's and, and one of my favorites. Okay. It's hard not it, – he is so funny. That is the best. I'm tell, I say this to everybody. That is the best in stadium experience, in my opinion, in mm-hmm. Atlanta. And I love the Braves, love the Hawks, love the Falcons. Uh, have never been to a United game, but I hear they're incredible. Uh, the in game, there's nothing better than the Atlanta Hawks, in oh, my opinion. It is. Yeah. Always yeah. fun. Always. There's just always something going on. People jumping off trampolines, and dunking, or, or, or whatever it is, and. And Harry out there dancing with whomever is doing the halftime, you know, concerts. It's just a fun time at the Hawks games, man. Anybody that can get down there, you should because it is big times. Great, great, great. Definitely. So we'll fa- let, we're going to take a little pause here. We're going to take a break, and then we'll come back and, uh, and and knock out some of the other events that y'all are doing and how people find out about it. I'm sure website, phone numbers, and all those things. Talking to uh, Sheriff Taylor and Lieutenant Hare here on Back Your Blue on Extra 106.3. Hey Atlanta, Hudson Mason here. Is a new roof still on your to-do list, but you've been delayed due to rising home service costs? Well, here's a fantastic solution from Accent Roofing Service. Zero down, zero payments, and zero interest for a full year. That's right. You can get your new roof now and start paying next year. Act quickly because Accent's incredible offer of zero, zero, zero with a 12-month deferred payment option for a lifetime roof system isn't going to last long. Contact the craftsman at Accent Roofing Service today. AccentRoofingService.com Calling all aspiring tradespeople. Ready to master a new skill to boost your career? Introducing the Blue Collar Virtual Trade School. Learn from industry experts from the comfort of your own home. Whether it's HVAC, plumbing, or electrical work, we've got you covered. Gain hands-on expertise through immersive virtual simulations and connect with instructors who have been in the field. Elevate your career potential. The Blue Collar Virtual Trade School, where future begins with a click. Visit the Blue Collar Virtual Trade School.com or call 678-916-6145. Extra 1063 and a second chance bail bonds are here to back your blue. Now back to the show on Atlanta's only conservative news and talk station, Extra 1063. Welcome back to Back Your Blue on Extra 106.3. My friend Daniel Madelon, he's the CEO of A Second Chance Bail Bonds, and uh, Sheriff Taylor and Lieutenant Hare from Gwinnett County here on the show today. So I uh, want to go back and, and finish up some of the great uh, events that y'all do that benefit Gwinnett County so much. So uh, I, I don't mean to cut you off earlier, so pick back up where you were. All righty. So after the Back to School Bash, the next uh, large event we do is our Thanksgiving food giveaway. 
This year is on November 7th, which is a Thursday, and that's at uh, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Gwinnett County Fairgrounds. And so that's that's one of the most rewarding events that we do. Uh, just to kind of give the listeners an idea, we have on average about 3,200 people, 3,500 people come out for that every year. Uh, last year, we gave out 1,000, 114,000 pounds. Wow. I'll say that again, 114,000 pounds of food. We're talking turkeys, hams, uh, roasters, which are the, the larger chickens, uh, 12 to 13 pound box of shelf sustainable items and fresh produce. Uh, that That's one of the largest food drives in one single day uh, that I've seen any law enforcement wow. department, you know, you know, handle or facilitate ever. That's really impressive, man. So, it really is. So, yeah, that that those are the things that we're looking forward to again this year. March 17th, our pop-up festival. That's at Las Plaza America in Lilburn. Back to School Bash, July 27th. That's at the Gwinnett County Fairgrounds. That's the backpack? That's the backpack, okay. yep. And the Thanksgiving food drive, November 7th, uh, at the Gwinnett County Fairgrounds. Uh, you can find all the information on GwinnettCountySheriff.org, GwinnettCountySheriff.org. Uh, just click on Community Outreach or uh, Upcoming Events. There's a little tab on the web page. Um, our, our email address is GCSO Community Outreach. Dot com gcso community outreach.com and we'll share it on the uh, the website for the show too so if you're listening now you can click on the link for the show wherever you're listening and and we'll link to all of those so it'll be easy to get to and, and daniel i mean obviously you've seen it all play out and and how i'll, be, exciting and I'll it be there is. and you and you'll be there that's exactly right <laughs> I, I will be there and and i understand sheriff that um <clears throat> I heard something, and this was during the break earlier. You were referenced to as a, as a pastor. So did, what did what did I miss? What man? Come on, man! That's just what on. I heard, <laughs> Lieutenant. Did I hear wrong? I felt like I heard something about that. Hey, we need to do another one of these check mic check mic one two three check mics. You okay. know, something got caught up in the airway somewhere. Seriously, something ain't okay. right. Something's something all ain't balanced. right about that right there. Right. The tuning fork is off. Uh, or something. Yeah, this past Sunday. Um, you know, another thing, too, um, it, 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 if I had to say one of the most rewarding things that I do is every year um, we partner in with uh, Pastor Jesse Kearney III over at New Mercy's Church. Um, basically, what they do is, is he has been for years raising money for St. Jude Hospital, okay, uh, and I think we all know what St. Jude is and the importance of a place like St. Jude. Yes, sir. And, you know, again, part of my development is, you know, I went to his church a couple of times and I saw it. And this was before I became sheriff. So I was like, look, if I ever get the opportunity to help, I want to be a part of that. And so by being sheriff, I've been able to be a part of it. And we've given out on an average of either – no less than ten thousand yeah. dollars a every, year. Every incredible. year we've been able to give with the help of folks like Daniel again. I'm gonna sure. give him his flowers while he's sitting. <laughs> yeah, here. absolutely. But you know, with the help of you know people like Daniel and others, you know, we've been able to present a check uh, in partnership with New Mercy's Church to St. Jude Hospital. Um, and like I said, we all know what that is about. So, you no know, question that's that's huge. Uh, I, I've been able to be a part of a little of that, too, uh, through radio and mm-hmm. radio thons and, and raising money for St. Jude. But what you may not know is I had my own brother pass at St. Jude. So St. Jude means a lot to me. My mom and daddy were really, really young mm-hmm. when they had their first child and he died just before I was born. But was, well, we're going to say this on the air right now, man. If you ever have anything, please include me. Yes, Especially sir. Especially anything dealing with St. Jude. Yes, sir. You know, I'm on board. I 110. Mean, childhood cancer, they're mm-hmm. cutting edge. Sickle cell anemia, cutting edge. They do things that no one else is able and capable of doing at mm-hmm. St. Jude. And and they do have a great partnership partnership with uh, Children's Health Care of Atlanta. And that's not mm-hmm. to leave out the incredible things that they do at CHOA. It's just different. It's just, they just different. They just do different mm-hmm. work. And uh, a lot of times kids get referred, just like my brother, it referred from Eggleston out to uh, St. Jude. And this is, you know, like it's 1975, so it's been many, many years. But just understanding the importance of that place and knowing that, that you have a heart for it, too, and, and you as well, Lieutenant, man, it, it it's it's a really, really special place. 
But I made a comment when I got up in the pulpit. Uh oh, is to it, speak. This is when we get like, back to being a preacher. Okay. <laughs> no, man, that's why we don't play with it. Oh, I got yes, up and that's I right. said, hey, look, I don't feel comfortable up here in this pulpit. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, maybe either God is trying to tell me something, still working with me or whatever, yeah. but you know, whatever it is I do when I'm no longer being sheriff pastor ain't gonna be one that's right that. absolutely yeah. you're looking for lightning bolts yeah, i know i would be no, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, we, i don't want to go to the church on a rainy day yeah we have a very good understanding you know i'll do what i need to do outside the church and yes, he'll sir. take care of everything that's inside exactly of the right church it's good it's good to have somebody like the uh the pastor the gentleman you're talking about that way he knows he got the direct line he can get to get down on his knees and pray for you you know oh, what i mean yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure everything's on the oven up <laughs> make sure you see my friend and a guy that I was in the Navy with, he'd call it Cool Points with Jesus. <laughs> he was like, you better pray about it. You better get yourself some Cool Points with Jesus because you're in trouble, pal. <laughs> That's the that truth. I'm not supposed to be laughing at all right <laughs> That's the truth. That's the true story. Oh, hey, you just goodness. took me all out of character. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He's, he's supposed to be the tough guy, sheriff, very stoic. He's over here laughing his tail off, about to fall yeah. out of the chair. No, but it is. Oh, you know man. what? That's 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 the, the best medicine there is, right? It is sure getting is. together and, yeah. and talking about things that matter, talking about things that are important, and having a laugh because that is the best it medicine is. there is, man. So can't thank you all enough for taking the time to come join us and uh and daniel the work that that you've done with them speaks for itself yeah it's what? It's, it's their programs are awesome and anytime anytime a second chance um can be a part of it we're we're 100 percent all in with, yeah. with gwinnett county sheriff's office so it's so impressive do you want to quickly just run back through the dates on the events and the website because i think that's imperative that people get that and hear that and know it perfect perfect so again, March seventeenth, twelve to six p.m. That's going to be our pop-up festival, and that's at the Las Plaza America, which is seven thirty-three Pleasant Hill Road, Lilburn, Georgia. Then we have our back-to-school bash that is going to be July twenty-seventh, from eleven a.m. to three p.m. That is at the Gwinnett County Fairgrounds, which is twenty-four hundred five Sugarloaf Parkway in Lawrenceville. And then you have the uh, Thanksgiving food giveaway, which is November seventh from 11 a.m. until 4 p.m., and that's at the Gwinnett County Fairgrounds. And the webpage for Gwinnett County Sheriff's Office uh, Community Outreach is GwinnettCountySheriff.org. And then if you want to reach out to the community outreach team, myself or uh, any of the deputies assigned to the unit, you can reach us at GCSOCommunityOutreach.com. And then we can provide, if you want to be a, a partner, a sponsor, yeah, for sure. or if you're looking for services help, yeah. and, and, and you're in need, yeah, just give us a, a, a shout through the email and I'll respond or one of my uh, team members will respond. Yes, sir. Lieutenant, we appreciate all your service. Thank you for what you do for the community. God bless you. Uh, continued success and safety. And, uh, and Sheriff, thank you so much for getting in here and laughing with us and, <laughs> and turning loose a little bit because I know your job is stressful and I know the things that you do are really serious. So it's be it's good to be able to see another side of, of somebody that is, is in typically a very stoic position. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you all. This is, your, uh, this is Back Your Blue. Uh, and, of course, along with uh, Daniel Madelon of A Second Chance Bell Bonds here on Extra 106.3. Make it a great day. This is an Extra 106.3 podcast. To hear more live and local content like this, tune into 106.3 FM or download the Extra 106.3 app. Hey, Atlanta, Hudson Mason here. Is a new roof still on your to-do list, but you've been delayed due to rising home service costs? Well, here's a fantastic solution from Accent Roofing Service. Zero down, zero payments, and zero interest for a full year. That's right. You can get your new roof now and start paying next year. Act quickly because Accent's incredible offer of zero, zero, zero with a 12-month deferred payment option for a lifetime roof system isn't going to last long. Contact the craftsman at Accent Roofing Service today, accentroofingservice.com. What are your plans for your business this year? Hey, it's Tug. Do you want to expand and grow? Aren't you exhausted by going to lenders, building a relationship, and a week later, you got a new person to deal with? You have to start all over again? You don't have that with First Liberty Building and Loan. The Frost family has been helping businesses grow since the 90s, and they want to know you. 
Unlike big banks, they want to partner with you. The Frost family knows the patterns. They know the ebbs and flows. They know business. Get to know them at FirstLibertyGA.com. Building a building? Buying a building? Buying a franchise? Expanding? Reach out to them. Spend 10 minutes with them. See if you're a fit for them and if they're a fit for you. You do that at FirstLibertyGA.com. And by the way, if you're a young banker and want to work with a team that is faith-friendly and has a culture of excellence, First Liberty might be a good match. Reach out to them today. First Liberty Building and Loan. FirstLibertyGA.com. That's FirstLibertyGA.com. Job seekers, stop the endless job hunt. The Blue Collar Recruiter is your key to the career you deserve. Are you a skilled worker seeking the right opportunity? Look no further. We connect you with employers who appreciate your dedication and expertise. Technicians, electricians, plumbers, welders, and more. We've got it all, and opportunities are just waiting for you. So skip the frustration and let us guide you to your next job. Call the Blue Collar Recruiter, 678-916-6145, or visit thebluecollarrecruiter.com. 